What's up guys, welcome back. Today I'm in the kitchen with a very special guest and we're making an absolutely epic gumbo for you guys. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell and enable notifications as well. What's up guys, as promised, we got a very special guest in the house today, all the way from Los Angeles. He literally just caught a red eye flight to be here, my uncle AB. What's good fam? Hey, check it out, y'all. He just introduced me. You know my name is A.B. Listen, I got a channel called Smoking and Grilling with A.B. Please don't let that name fool you, because check this out. I do all of this also. And if you've been watching me, you know I got a saying, right? My saying is, you say it. We're not going to overtalk it. That's right. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to my nephew right here, and we finna get it. We got something extra special for you guys today. We're making a pretty non-traditional gumbo for you guys. Hey, you say non-traditional. Check this out. If y'all ask me, I'm going to call this epic right here. Absolutely. Now let's go ahead and get into these ingredients. Hey, you know what? And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and take something from you. Let's make it happen. All right. So as AB said, this is an epic pot of gumbo we're making for you guys today. We have three different types of crab legs. We got some lobster tails. Hey, it sounds like you was about to skip this. This right here, we got that Dungeness crab. Now listen, if you out here, what is this? The Del Marva area? Yes, sir. Area, you gotta have that. I need to start cooking with more of this. You know what I mean? Uh, kind of like hard to find you know, on my side of the uh, country. And then listen, if you have been watching my channel, you know I get down with these. That's right, king crab. Yes, sir. We also have some lump crab, about a pound of lump crab here. We have some andouille sausage, which is super traditional in Cajun and Creole cuisine, particularly with gumbo. You can't have a gumbo without that. We got some chicken stock. We got that what? That W sauce, man. Yes, sir. Or Worcestershire sauce for anybody else at home. We got the chicken bouillon. We got some smoked paprika, a little Louisiana hot sauce. Oh, you keeping it traditional, huh? You went with the Louisiana. Yes, sir. I see you. We have some uh, garlic paste and your Cajun seasoning. Here, look, we got a couple of pounds of, uh, what are these, jumbo? Jumbo, look, and they still kind of frozen, right? Hey, listen, it's going to be a trick to this. We're going to explain that to you by using the, uh, the frozen shrimp. And then over here, we got our veggies. Check it out. We got the green bell pepper, red bell pepper. We got the yellow onion. We got, hey, look at this right here. Y'all know what that is, that's that cell. Now let's talk about the herbs. You wanna talk about the herbs, bro? Yes, sir, we got <laughs> we got some fresh thyme, we got some bay leaves, and that's of right. course, we got some green onion for garnish. In my opinion, one of the key components of a good gumbo is a good stock. I'm gonna show you guys how to doctor up your stock from scratch. We're gonna start by chopping up some andouille sausage. What you got going over there, Unc? You know what, so look, while you doing that, look, we gonna multitask, right? I'm gonna go ahead and take this celery. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and dice up all the, uh, all of the veggies, right? So what I'm doing here is uh, chopping up the andouille sausage. That's gonna be the foundation of flavor for our stock. So I'm gonna add this to the stock pot and I'm gonna let it render, I'm gonna let the sausage render some of its fat. That's gonna release a lot of that flavor. Andouille sausage has a great flavor profile. It's got some heat to it. It's got some smokiness. Very traditional in Cajun cuisine. Now let me ask you this. When you're doing your, uh, your dicing, how big do you want them to be or do you care? It doesn't matter to me, but I think the main, the most important thing is making sure they're all the same size so they cook at the same rate. The worst thing is having some raw vegetables into, you know, when you're cooking something, something's raw and everything else is cooked. So as long as they're the same size, I think we're in good shape. All right. All right. So what we got going on right here is we have a Dutch oven that we're going to warm up, add a little bit of avocado oil just to get, you know, everything started. Then we're going to add in that andouille sausage. That's going to be the foundation of flavor for this stock that we're gonna doctor up here. Working over medium heat here. You just wanna brown up that sausage. Give it time to release some of its fat and flavor. Andouille sausage has some delicious flavor to it. It's a little smoky, got a little bit of spice. And we want all of that flavor to be at that bottom of that pan when we make our stock. It's already smelling good in here, huh? Oh man, that's an understatement, bro. Hey, but you know what? I like the way that you bring me all the way out this way. You know what I mean? You send that invite, I show up, and now I'm being a sous chef. <laughs> How dark you want this room to be? You want it dark, dark? I want it as dark as you can get it. Hey, I got it, man. Hey, you know, uh, I was telling you that I was just talking to somebody, and they were saying they can make a roof in what about five, five minutes? Five minutes. That's impressive. I, don't, I can't do that. I've been cooking for a long time, but a five minute roux. That's scary. That's Yeah, that's that's impressive. So as you can see here, we got the uh, andouille sausage browning up nicely, starting to develop a little fond at the bottom of the pan. We're gonna get that up. All of that flavor is gonna permeate through that stock that we're about to make. Oh man, that smells heavenly right there, bro. 
So we're gonna take that slotted spoon, remove that andouille sausage, leaving behind all of that fat and flavor in the pan. I probably should grab a bigger bowl, <laughs> but uh, we'll make it work. Add these smoked uh, neck bones in here. That's just gonna add additional flavor to our stock. So we're going in with a few smoked neck bones. We're going in with some fresh veggies. We got some celery, a little bit of onion. All right, so here we've got some uh, better than bouillon chicken base. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon or so of that just to beef up the chicken flavor in here. And then we're going in with our chicken stock and we're just gonna let that boil for about an hour or so, let those flavors really release. We're gonna strain that and that'll be the stock that we're gonna use for our gumbo. Sounds good. Store-bought boring chicken stock going in. I'm gonna give that a makeover. <laughs> I like that. You know me, I got one word for it all. That that leveled it up and made it fire, bro. Absolutely. <clears throat> you can already see the flavor in there. Oh yeah. Hey, check it out. This the way I do my roux when I do it, right? So go ahead, cut up some more of this andouille sausage, because I want to put that in there and we're gonna get some of them flavors, you know, in this oil in, inside of our roux, right? So once you finish that, hey, first first thing, go ahead. There we get go. some fire in here. Now that's a fire. Yes, sir. Let's start building some heat. Slice up some andouille sausage for you. Right. And we'll get that root on. Get that root started. I'm gonna go ahead and put some real fire underneath it. There we go. Just so I can hear it. Once I hear it, then we'll adjust the fire and then we'll move on to the next step. Listen, I hope you guys can hear it. You can hear it starting to cook. I'm just moving it around. Look, it's gonna leave some. I don't know how to explain it, but listen, you're gonna see the marks and the prints on the bottom. Again, I didn't add no oil. What I'm trying to do is put a little sear and get the flavors that's inside of the andouille sausage to release in the bottom of the pot. I don't care what sticks or nothing like that because then we're gonna put our oil in here and after we get our oil and everything together, we're gonna end up putting the veggies in there and then when we do the veggies, you know, that's gonna bring up all the fun. Yes, and that sir. right there is gonna be that. Hey, that's I what I can't wait because I'm getting hungry. Yes, sir. All right. So look, you look, I'm looking at these right here. Look, they got some good color on it. You know what I mean? Look, left a little flavor down here on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead, you can go ahead and take those out. I'm gonna go ahead and add the oil. Using avocado oil for the high smoke point so the roux has less likely to burn. That's right, okay. Hey, I like that. Cause I, I don't wanna say what I told you off camera. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Again, guys, for those of you that have never made a roux and you want to take the easier way or, or the easier approach, you can try the oven method. It takes a little bit longer, but much less likely that you're going to burn it. But we got some veterans in the house today, so we're going to cook it nice and hot and fast. Nah, he say hot and fast. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to try to rush the process, but it's not going to be fast. Like I said earlier, you know, we were talking about, we both seen someone that said they can do it in five minutes. Right. Uh, do we want to do this in five minutes? We would like to, but to... For this video purpose, you know what I mean? That's Hey, that's the next uh, trip <laughs> when we just experiment, you know right. what I mean? Hey, super easy. So look, what you want to do is you want to heat up your oil, right? When you heat up your oil, you will look at it. When you look at the top, it looks like it got like a little dust of wind blowing on it or, or whatever. Look, it'll start to shimmer. Then you know you got a little heat. Now, that was a cup and a half of that avocado oil. This right here is a cup and, cup and a half of all-purpose flour. Look, the oil's up to temp. I got a nice shimmer on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and take my flour. We're gonna get our spoon and listen, everything in increments, right? This is a cup and a half of flour. We just wanna, you know what, let me do it this way. I'm right-handed. You wanna control this part right here. So listen, we just put a little bit in here like this and I keep it moving. Hey, you know what, do me a favor, Matt. You go ahead, you stir, and I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, do this. You know, I'm, I'm right-handed, but this right here is key. We don't wanna put too much in there, right? So this, and look, we don't want no lumps. So we just keep moving it around like that. Now I want you guys to take a look at that color. This is what you come up with in the very beginning as you start. It's more of that little tan, look like that Italian leather, you know? But we're gonna keep moving it, keep stirring it. And the real key is like having a decent heat and then working that elbow and that wrist and that spoon as if it was uh, like, like, a, like a machine. You know what, I don't like to stop it. You know, so. And the key is don't walk away from it. If you walk away from oh, it, you yeah, go burn yeah. it. You gotta stay, this is something you gotta babysit for sure. All right, so I want you guys to come in here and take a look at this right here. You know what I mean? Look at this color right here. 
this is what you want to see. Now this has been after about 10 minutes at like a, man, I want to say this like a medium low heat. You can see it's got a little heat, little smoke coming up off of it. And listen, he made a point to me that he was talking about. You know what he was talking about? Like why he doesn't do his this way? Go ahead and explain that so part the reason again. why I don't do the andouille sausage at first is because all of the fawn that sticks to the bottom, naturally as you're scraping the pot, you'll start to see some of it float. And some people might think that that looks like the roux is burning, so it can kind of throw you off a little bit. But as you can see, we got a nice milk chocolate roux going right now. Oh, yeah. Everything is looking good. We got some of that fawn coming up off the bottom. <laughs> I'm excited to eat. Hey, me too, bro. You want to talk about your mouth water. Hey, but just when I see these kind of colors right here and see that smoke right here, that tell me this right here going to be nice. So look, I'm going to let it catch up. You don't, I know I say stir, you know, 100% of the time, but yeah. I like to stop. You see, I stop for a minute, let it get about 30 seconds under the heat, let it, you know, catch up a little bit, and then I go back to stirring. That's how it browns up a little bit quicker. Yep. All right, while you finish up that, I'm going to go ahead and strain this stock. Okay. And look, I'm going to have them come on in there, zoom in here, and look at this. One more time, I want you to see this color. This is where we want to stop it at, because listen, it's going to darken up once we put the veggies in. So go ahead, take a look at this, and tell me what you guys think about that right there. Now, let me know, let us know, excuse me, you know, what you think about this and the process, and if you do your own, let us know what your process is down in the comment section below. Oh, that yeah, right there? got a good color right yes, there. Yes, sir. Going in with the Trinity. Go ahead. You ready? Let's go. Now, guys, be super careful. Super. You don't, don't want any can, of this to get I don't know if they you. can see me that I jump back. And the reason that is, because that's oil and water. We got our Trinity in there. Smelling amazing. Oh, yeah. Instantly. Oh, man. Look how dark that roux is now. Yes, sir. Now, remember, the key is you want to keep everything moving. You know, I just adjusted my heat. Just actually kicked it up just a little bit because I had it on super low once I achieved the cover, color that we know we were looking for. Now, look at that right there. Now it almost looks like chocolate. Almost, it does look like chocolate. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yes, sir. That's a dark root, people. Take a look at this stock, guys. You can't get a stock this color at the grocery store. That's why we doctor it up a little bit, increase the flavor, elevate everything. Take it to the next level. Go with sausage first. Going in with that andouille sausage. There we go. Give that a good mix, and then we'll go on with this homemade chicken stock. Nothing sticking down to the bottom. Perfect. Real nice. I'm just gonna let my uh, almost heat like you've done back. this before. Almost. I might have. Going in with that chicken there, stock. There you go. There we go. Ah oh, yeah. And look. Once you put that stock in there, you run this across the bottom of there. Nah, it's just nice and smooth, man. Everything doesn't come up off the bottom now. And to add a little bit more liquid, you can add a cup or two of water just to dilute things a little bit, give right. us some more. Right. Some of that's gonna cook off as it, as it simmers also. So, all right, so we got the uh, gumbo going right now. We're gonna go in with three bay leaves. Just to start infusing a little bit more flavor in there. Then we're gonna add in our seafood here in just a minute. So we're gonna break out the big boy and cut these uh, lobster tails right in half. They were already kind of pre-cut from the butcher. We got these from Wegmans, so shout out to him. Thank you for making my life a little bit easier. And cut these in half and just pop them right into the gumbo just like that. So everybody that gets a bowl gets a half of a lobster tail. Hey, you know what? And I tell everybody, look, you want to do this because you're going to have somebody that's going to want to come and they're going to try to take the whole thing. This way you can ensure that at least <laughs> eight people got a piece of the like, you know, some exactly. lobster tail. Because I'll be the one to come over and grab the whole lobster tail. <laughs> Now, look, we just tasted this, right? We know we got a great base. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and start adding some of our seasonings to it. All right, so what I would add, like a tablespoon or two of some garlic paste. We're going with some garlic powder as well. Beef up the garlic flavor a little bit. And I don't know, I'm not gonna lie. You know what, I know we give measurements, but really you want to taste this. And as you taste it, you can just adjust it right there. You know what I mean? Like Absolutely. Two tablespoons, when you taste it, you're like, ah, I might need a little extra. Yep. You know what I mean? Then you go so from there. That's a great point. You want to taste as you go, make sure that you adjust the seasoning to your preference. For those of you that are trying to follow along, we do have the full recipe, ingredients, and the directions in the description box below. Here's your good friend. Ooh wee! You know me. Hey, I got to use that W sauce, y'all. All right. So for me, I'm gonna put uh, 
about a tablespoon in here. You know, just see where we at right here. Go ahead oh, and get yeah. this rice boiling. That's right, man. It's coming together. Look, when you this far along, you're almost done. You know? Hey, so I know he's gonna wanna put this, he got that hot sauce ready. You gotta have it like a, just a little bit of a bite in it. How much do you think I should put in there? That Andouille sausage got some spice, so I would say maybe a tablespoon. All right. Just shake it till your wrist hurt. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna hold that right here. I'm trying to eat some of this. All right. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of that smoked paprika. You got some uh, good smoky flavor coming from the andouille sausage, but this is gonna, you know, in intensify that smokiness just a little bit. You don't need to go too much with that, just a few dashes. And then whatever Cajun seasoning you guys like. So right here we have some Slap Your Mama. You can use Tony's, you can use J-O, you can use whatever you like. Hey, come on, man. You know you're supposed to say that Creole kick. Absolutely. There we go. And we'll we'll uh, mix that in, give it another taste, see how it's, you know, how it's doing, and then we'll adjust the flavor as needed. Hey, but before we go, I gotta tell you this. Smelling good. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. All right, so. This step right here is optional for those of you that do not like okra. You don't have to add it. You can yeah. use frozen okra. You can fry okra. You can put it in there. Uh, just chop it up. Hey, but right you know now, what? Frying. Tell them what our frying do when you frying. Frying keeps it from getting too slimy. Some people right, don't like right. the slimy texture of okra. I actually like okra. So right, right. we're going here. in with about a cup and a half of uh, chopped Same okra here. here. Again, it's optional, guys. If you don't like it, you don't have to add it. But the flavor is getting great. Tastes good. We're about to start adding in the seafood. Got us a nice pot of gumbo. Going. Oh yeah, you know what? You can tell. Look, the thickness. Even before we put the uh, before we put the okra in here, look at that. Oh yeah, look at that right there. Ooh -wee. Look at the thickness. I mean, it still looks like liquid, but you can just see it's got a little resistance to it. This right here is right, y'all. Oh yeah. We have some king crab. Enormous amount of crab meat going in here. I'm not going to be able to use all of this, but to make us a little seafood bowl later, oh, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, but you got to get that, that king crab in there, though. Oh, no doubt. Got to get that in there. There we go. Get some of that dungeness in there, too. Oh, yeah. Hey, my bad. Break hey, got to get that in there. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Everybody's going to get some crab meat today. I mean, we're good. Ah, smell it now. Oh, man. Right. Now we're going in with that pound of lump crab meat. It's coming together now. And these lobster tails. And we gotta get that uh that shrimp. Yep, we'll throw them shrimp in there last. All right, so as you can see, the uh, gumbo is coming together beautifully. When you start to see those lobster tails curl up like that, that indicates that they're just about done cooking, which means it's perfect time to go ahead and add in these shrimp. Now, I know people in the comments are gonna say you should take the tails off, but we got we gotta give you guys something to talk about in the comments. <laughs> you can uh, you can take the tails off if you want, or you can leave them on there. Either way, I like to think of them as a little handle dip in the gumbo, bite it right off. Hey, look, earlier I said we're gonna tell them why we use frozen. Go ahead and tell that part right there. So I like to use frozen shrimp so it helps to prevent overcooking the shrimp. If you put defrosted shrimp in there, they cook pretty much immediately. And you run the risk of overcooking your shrimp and they get kind of rubbery. So I throw the semi-frozen shrimp in there to uh, you know slow the cooking process just a little bit. Right, right, right. Hey, I ain't gonna lie to you. It sound good, bro. Hey, <laughs> hey, on paper, that's the go-to. There we go. There we go. Once I see it come back to a boil, I'm gonna cut everything off. And then we're gonna we'll go ahead done. and uh, yeah. This is starting to look like a gumbo. Yes, sir. The lobster tails are done. They've curled up beautifully. Hey, you know what? Shrimp have turned I'm gonna paint. go ahead and reduce and just take off the fire. Good call. Everything is done at this point. Only thing left is uh, plating it up. Get us a money shot. Ooh, man, let's go, man. I'll tell you, I'm hungry. So look, we're gonna go ahead and get our rice together. I like to use these little small bowls and I like to use some kind of like any kind of canola spray like Pam, this is vegetable oil, this is good too. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just, that's it, right? I'm gonna take a napkin and this is all for the presentation. What I'm doing is make, creating a non-stick, you know, dish. We just take it, put it in the center. You just wanna get it centered. Yep. Pull it off like that. Beautiful. Voila. That's what I'm talking about. Hold on, we gotta get the money shot. All 
All right, guys, we're going to wrap this up. It's smelling great in here. I'm ready to eat this bowl of gumbo. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Leave us a comment. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. And hey, you know what, man? I'm, I'm finna dig in because, look, you just stopped me just a minute ago talking about I got to get a <laughs> thumbnail. Now, you didn't got your thumbnail. You know what I mean? You gave me a little sample. Hey, that right there is fire. Look, I don't want you to over talk it. I just want to say, hey, thanks for having me though. on the real though, bro. Hey, nephew. Hey, the hospitality out here in VA, this was, uh, hey, this was 100, y'all. Hey, I don't want to, like, over-talk it, you know what I mean? Uh, hey, and I don't want to get all touchy-feely, you know what I'm saying? Hey, but I done found me, you know, somebody that, you know, like, shares the whole passion that I share, you know, for this cooking. And, uh, hey, I'm not going to ramble. Check this out. Thanks for making my bowl. I'm out. <laughs> Give it the trademark taste test. I got to get a little bit of everything in here. Some of that rice. Sausage. Uh oh uh, lost one. Man down, huh? Oh, uh, that's it. Let me show you how we do it on the West Coast.